All right. How are we all doing out there? Let's see. I've got, um... <laughs> all right, I got Anthony on my schedule today at three o'clock. All right, Anthony. <laughs> okay, gang. Let's get let's get going. Welcome to our um, sales call. Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> it's this a green water bottle? <laughs> you see right through it. <laughs> cool. Anyway, um, welcome everyone to our sales call. This is designed to be a, a question and answer. Um, you know, whatever questions you guys have, sales wise, I can answer it. We can go into it. I've got other things I can talk about. So, so, so you guys really, really kind of run the uh, run the show, and then, um, and then uh, you know we can get into other stuff. So, um, and you can chat at me. You can unmute yourself and ask questions. Uh, I was talking to someone yesterday. It was really cool. Um, they were talking about all the people that we had on our on our uh, conference calls last week. <laughs> and um, I guess I was trying to make a point of what these people are doing, all these top producers, and um, kind of put them in your face and let you make your own determination on what is it they're doing that you're not doing. You know, if you desire to get to their level, you know, what yeah. is that um, that you're doing that they're there or what is it that they're doing that you're not doing and um, and so I was talking to him and he's he was kind of like it really got him motivated because you know we're just pummeling and pummeling 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 you know we had Jeremy Patton you know on Tuesday last week and then um, we had uh, Jared Gonzalez on okay. Thursday uh, on this call Thursday last week and then we had um, Mike Marisi on Saturday. Um, am I missing anyone else? Oh yeah, we had. Uh, then we had um, James and Pamela Lara on Tuesday. Um, this last Tuesday. So I guess uh, <laughs> I guess you could draw your own conclusions. Um, so I mean, what? I mean, let's just talk freely. What? What do you guys? Is there anything common that you found? that all of them are doing, like what is common among all of them that you were able to discern if you were on, you know, I'm open for people shipping in here. Anybody? Hello? We've got 14 on here. Anybody? Are you able to mute? Let's see, we've got Brittany, Anthony, Connie, Don, Harriet, Jay, Ken, Lauren, Michael Jacobs, Rick. Welcome, Rick. Scott, Jay. All right. I can chatting at me, a lot of activity. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. They're doing a lot. That's Scott Mills. They do a lot of activity. Um, they dial the phone a lot, don't they? I mean, I don't think we saw anyone under 200, 300 dials. I think there were like 300 to 500 dials, right? Dialing the phone. Um, what other common things did you guys see with all those people that I had on here. They were doing about almost 10,000 a week, right? They're all kind of averaging. I think Mike Morisi said maybe seven, 8,000. Other, everyone else was like, what, Jarrah was 22,000. Um, James Alara was 17,000. Um, <clears throat> Jeremy Patton consistently, you know, around 10 you know, seven to 10. I don't know that he said it. Maybe I didn't ask. Um, that was a, 
you know, that was pretty significant, wasn't it? <laughs> what they were averaging. And it does, like Scott said, it does, you know, come, come out of activity, just activity. They got a lot, lot of stuff going on. They're working. You know, when, when you say that a lot of activity that just to, in my mind, that just means work, you know, they're working, they're working, 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 you know, um, I guess, um, anyone have any questions? Todd's on here, Jay. <laughs> Everyone's quiet. Activity. Activity. I like it. <laughs> That's so true, man, Todd. Activity. Applications. Getting applications done. Getting applications in. Um, so I was, uh, so my daughter brought back home a guitar. It was a, a really inexpensive uh, Squire Strat. It's a Fender um, Strat made in Indonesia. Okay, so this is like their budget line, really meant to be a, a beginning, a beginner's guitar. You know, it's got three single coils. I mean, it looks like a regular Strat, but, you know, it, it was made very inexpensively. I'm not going to say cheap. I mean, it's, it is cheap, but it's uh, anymore today, the quality is just decent, you know. And her friend, her, her friend uh, was just kind of, he broke a string. So she brings back this guitar. And I don't know if you know this about me, but I am a mega fix it guy. I fix everything. If something's broken, I'll fix it. Um, you know, uh, ball bearings were making noise in the washing machine. So I fixed it. I, I looked up on YouTube and then I learned how to take the tub out. I learned how, there's a special puller that pulls out the bearings in the tub. And I replaced it because I watched YouTube, replaced it, put that sucker back in. And now it's like sweet. It doesn't make any noise. And, you know, I've just fixed things. I don't care what it is. I love to fix things. But when it comes to instruments, I'm all about it. Like I would do it for free. If someone said, hey, can you fix this? Man, I'm all over it. I would because I love fixing things. And so my daughter said, daddy, can you like help my friend guitar? And it was like, okay, let me take a look at it. And there was so much wrong with it. So much wrong with it. The action of the strings off the fretboard was like super high. I don't know how anyone could play it. Um, one string was broken. Um, there was just all things wrong. The, the tuners were loose. And it's like, I'm going, oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, I can fix it. And then it was like a challenge to me because I knew how to fix every one of those problems. And I just went after it as like, okay, I need to bring the action down. So let's adjust the bridge so that the strings can go down. And then I found that the neck angle wasn't right. So I took the neck off. I put a little shim in there so I got a good neck angle so I could get it so that I can bring the strings down. Okay, I'm, I don't expect you to understand what I'm saying, but I knew exactly what to do. I tightened the tuners, I put new strings on it, there's only one more thing I have to do is fix the intonation of the bridge so that the, the notes in tune all the way up the fretboard. And that's the last thing I have to do. That will take me, I don't know, 15 minutes, right? But when there's something wrong with guitar, I know what to look for. I know how to fix it and I will fix it. And now the thing, I plugged in my amp. I got this really old Fender Princeton amp. It's like a 1967 amp. Oh my gosh. This thing sounds great. I was like, for a cheap guitar, this thing sounds awesome. And so I can't wait to finish it up, but man, things got great action now. The, I adjusted the neck so it's perfect. I cranked the neck truss rod down so the neck is actually super straight. Man, I got that thing humming. I, this thing is this is gonna be perfect to play. It's almost like, man, I wanna keep it now. <laughs> anyway, the point of all that is to say this, is that there's an ideal way that the instrument should be played. There's an ideal way that the neck should be. There's like to make it in perfect playing position so that anyone plays it will have an optimized performing guitar. Optimized, like, you know, it's the bestest guitar can be. And 
I love doing that. I love optimizing things so that it can be the best it could be. And um, I look at this business, we have all kinds of people coming into our business that have little background insurance or they have too much background in insurance. <laughs> they know too much, right? I've got people that are broken, that they don't have any self-confidence. I have people that come in that got massive egos that think they know everything better than me or any of the top producers. And, and they think that the leads are terrible because they can't close them. You know, they, they're, they're calling out symptoms of a problem and they're pointing at something that is really not the problem, right? It's really not the problem. You know, at one point you can say, this guitar sucks, I can't play this guitar. When in fact, you as a player suck, right? The reason why you can't get any good notes out of the guitar is you don't, can't play worth crap and you don't practice, right? And you don't put time into your instrument to learn the stupid thing. So it's not the instrument that sucks, it's you. <laughs> it's not the guitar. I've set the guitar up so that sucker can play, man. Stevie Ray Vaughan can come down from heaven and he will, well, actually Stevie Ray Vaughan can take any bad guitar and make it sound good. So that's probably not a good analogy. But so when people come into our business, they come in with all kinds of deficiencies from the ideal model of an agent, right? And no one's like ideal, but I'm saying, you know, ultimately when we measure someone's performance, it's someone who calls leads, books appointments, closes sales, has their sales stick and they get paid, right? Ultimately that's the model, the model of someone who is making money with us and they're making great money and their business is staying on the books, right? I mean, would everyone agree that that is sort of the model agent someone who can convert leads into sales and convert sales into income and convert that income into ongoing renewals on all the renewal products. Uh, you tell me, I mean, I'm, I was kind of soliciting what you guys thought that was, but no one's answering. I guess maybe everyone's thinking that it's obvious, most obvious to the casual observer. Um, well, Alex, this is Jeff. That is that is the measure, right? I mean, if you're selling, but it's not just about selling. It's you also got to sell with uh, with the good technique so that the business stays. Because a yeah, lot of yeah. people can sell, um, but then it goes. You know, you do something that's untoward for the customer, and the next thing you know, it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, they get a premium that's fifty dollars higher than what was quoted, um, and they and they cancel. You know, yeah. so no, I totally agree. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, ultimately, we want quality business that stays on the books, which means, in my opinion, that quality business denotes or equals someone who really cared about the client. If your placement of persistency sucks, it just means you did not care about the client, right? That's the way I equate it, um, ultimately. And that's exactly what, right, Jeff? I mean, I agree. It's you know, your care of the client will be reflected in your placement of persistency in my opinion um so yeah perfect man absolutely so don says discipline to work schedule yes call lots of leads from a variety of sources yes invest in their business most started slow but stayed focused on what they wanted dude absolutely don don wins the prize <laughs> Discipline to work a schedule, called lots of leads from a variety of lead sources, invested in their business. Most started slow. Dude, like you totally, <laughs> and you are your own worst enemy. Aren't we all? Me included. This guy right here, I'm my own worst enemy. And you have no idea, you know. So there's, and you all can be so great at this because you could be like them. And you know, like Jeremy Patton and, and uh, um, Jared Gonzalez, you know, they're not perfect. They all had their issues, but they managed them <laughs> and they still have them. That's the thing, they haven't, they haven't, they all haven't gone away. <laughs> so like, you're okay, really, like really you're okay. There's nothing wrong with you. I mean, you, it's amazing how little success can overshadow all the faults that you have, you know. 
I mean, that's why I go to church every morning, because I'm a sinner. <laughs> I have failings, and I'm just not ultimately doing everything I can do to glorify my God in heaven. I fall short, and so I go to church every morning to contemplate, where did I fall short? How did I um, fail you guys? How did I fail you? How can I do better at um, speaking life into you all? Because you all are, I mean, you all can be so great at this, really. I mean, you could be that ultimately playing guitar, you know, that I can, you know, that I tweaked. But I think a lot of times is, you know, physician heal thyself. So much of the, the solutions are in your own hands as well. Like the, the, the thing I always like to say is like, if you were your, if you were being coached, what do you think your coach would tell you? What would a coach tell you about what you're not doing? You know, and it's funny how you would probably come up with like 95% of exactly, <laughs> exactly those reasons. Okay. And, um, and so let's, you know, just kind of like, um, so now I'm on a roll. I'm starting to think, you know, what can, what can we talk about here? Um, let me open up and keep chatting at me, man. And if you have any comments or, or whatever, man, I, I welcome them because everyone would, everyone would love to hear what your all thoughts are. And um, so, So issue and solution like, okay, the strings are too high off the fretboard. Okay, so, you know, so I'm just gonna just give you strings too high. Okay, solution, there's a couple of them. The bridge needs adjusting. There's several of them actually. Um, the neck, neck relief. The neck needs to be straighter because you can adjust the neck where it's got a little bit of a bow or you can make it super flat. Um, number three, the nut. The nut at the top of the guitar uh, needs to be filed down a little bit closer so that the strings are closer to the, to the fretboard. Okay, so problem is strings too high. There are several things that I could do to fix it. And if I have to do all three, it'll be the most perfect playing guitar, right? So, <laughs> so you can put down all kinds of solutions um, to whatever issues that you might have. Oh, wow. Check my bald spot. No, I don't have one yet. <laughs> anyway, so, um, uh, so you guys tell me, like, uh, let's say, uh, uh, fear of dialing the phone. You're scared to pick up the phone. So what is a good solution for fear of dialing the phone? So you guys coach me, like I'm scared of dialing the phone. I've got lots of these bonus leads, but I'm just like that phone weighs like 20 tons, man. So what would you guys, what, what solutions would you guys give me as a remedy to this? Come on, let's have some fun. What would you coach someone if they're afraid of dialing the phone? Chat at me. This is gonna be a long conference call. Am I not seeing it? Maybe I'm not seeing it. Oh, hold on, hold on. Anybody? What would you do at, to recommend to someone that is scared of dialing the phone? Role play. That's a good one, man. Role play. So you can kind of get used to what you're going to say. Because a lot of it, right, Jay, a lot of it is just not knowing what to say. Oh my gosh, Alex, I don't know what to say. Well, role play. Um, we're not interested anymore. Role play what you're going to say so you know what you're going to say every time someone says that. So that's a good one. I like that one. 
if someone's married, ask that person married the first person that they. First person that they spoke to, were they nervous? Have them listen. Let's give that person married. Oh, did you marry the first person you spoke to? <laughs> were they nervous? Yeah, that's a really, actually a really good one. I mean, doing anything for the first time, right? It's like recognition. Um, recognition of what that fear is. You know, it's kind of like, if you understand where it's coming from, you can deal with it, right? It, like, when you, remember guys, when you first asked, first asked someone out to, on a date, you know, how many times you picked up the phone and then hung up because you didn't know exactly what you're gonna say? Or you, you like feared like you're gonna act stupid? I mean, that's a good one actually. Dating analogies always work great for sales. <laughs> you know, that is very true. And you start, you were nervous. You're nervous when you got started, but then when you start becoming a player, <laughs> then man, you could be asking girls out left and right, man. It's like no big deal. You go, you know, I mean, just easy. You can learn how to talk to people, you know. Otherwise, you're going to be a very lonely person. You know, just sometimes you got a need to get out of that fear. But anytime you do anything for the first time, so, you, so it's just like anything, you know, understanding where that fear is coming from. Um, listen to live dials. Yeah. Listen to other people dialing the phone and realizing that say no big deal. They get shut down like everyone else, right? Um, yeah, objections, learn objections. Learn how to handle objections. Help them to get over the nose. Yeah, that's really kind of this. Actually, it's more than that. It's like, what? how are you gonna react when they say no? You know, really deciding that it's not a big deal. We sell ourselves every day. That's how we gain friends and relationships. Hunter, that's true too. You guys go through life selling yourself. You just don't know it. <laughs> you don't realize it. Like if you're married, you sold your wife or your husband, right? Um, have a script to go by. Yep, scripts are a great guide. That helps overcome fear because you're not having to worry about trying to make something up. You go by script. That's what I always did. Okay. So fear of dialing. Listen to other people, like role play with someone else. Understand where the fear is coming from. Listen to live dials like we do on Mondays and Thursdays. You can hear people do it. We got a bunch of recordings of people doing it. Learn how to handle objections and those and the script. So fear of dialing and, and this issue manifests itself in um, lack of numbers when you, when you report, you know, lack of numbers for dial counts, when you track your when you track your um, activity report. And that's the biggest thing to me, right gang? You don't, ex you can't in expect what you don't inspect. So when I see like poor dialing numbers, I got to figure out what is causing that, right? And then let's figure out a solution. Nor product and talk about methods and solutions. Yeah, that's more on the side of, um, yeah, I guess that could contribute to fear dialing is not knowing the product. But in, at the end of the day, knowing that you have someone to call <laughs> when you have a product question and we, you know, and that really comes from studying and learning, right? As far as solutions. Okay. How about, um, this one's got a whole, you know, um, zero production. <laughs> every week. You don't turn in anything. Zero production every week. You know, that's, you can go into fear of the phone. Like you got someone who doesn't turn any business, but they've got leads. They've got, you know, maybe, what would you say? Well, this is really general, isn't it? Um, you'd have to go into why if there's activity, so the question I would ask is there, if there's activity, if there's activity there, but they don't turn in business. 
So let's say zero production every week, but they dial and book appointments. So to me, this is probably a skill thing. What, what would you guys say? It's probably related to skill. I think. But they're hitting it, so I can work with them. I can coach someone who's dialing and booking appointments. I can coach them to get production out of what they're doing. So some of y'all have done this. Some of y'all have hit the phones and, you know, um, what do you guys think? Lack of knowledge, skill versus will. Oh, yeah. I like that. Skill versus will. They have the will, but they don't got the skill, right? Who's that, Ken? Yeah. They have the will, but they don't got the skill. So the will is if you do more work, work will develop the skill, right? So we, we talk about this all the time. It's kind of like leads times work. develop skill, which leads to results, right? Leads times work. And you hear that all the time. Yesterday, you heard it on the activity call. They're willing to invest $1,000 a week in leads, and they're willing to put the work behind it, right? Willing to do $500 a week to turn all those leads into money. But look, if you convince your wife to put a thousand bucks on your credit card to buy leads, okay, number one, you're a great salesperson, <laughs> right? And number two, you better, better, better dial the phone, right? I like that skill versus well. Lack of knowledge of the product and maybe we are not listening to what their needs really are. So that's a good one. Product. So let's simplify the product thing. When people turn in a lead, let's say final expense lead, they want to know that if they die, a certain amount of monies get paid for their beneficiary for the funeral and final expenses, right? So that's product knowledge 101. Clients want to know when they die that it's going to pay out. Okay, mortgage protection. Clients want to know if they die, they're going to have X amount of money to either pay off the mortgage or pay down the mortgage to refinance, right? Or mortgage payment protection, right? So there you go. There you go, product, man. That's your product training for today. So for here and evermore, you don't have to worry about product knowledge. <laughs> Actually, I'm being a little facetious, Don, okay? Because we always look from product from the salesman standpoint. We always fail to look at product from the client's standpoint. And this is product from the client's standpoint. And most, most agents, they're coming out of car sales or window sales or TV sales or appliance sales, and they get into this features benefits mentality of, I got to tell them how many wash cycles there are and how many spin cycles there are and how delicate is the delicate cycle for the delicate items that could go in there and the temperature. Can you adjust the temperature? And right, you, I don't even know anything about washing machines. Okay. There's a pre soak. Can I do a pre soak on my, <laughs> okay, whatever. They, some people come out of that world and they go into this world. And then like, um, oh, Don, yeah, RVs. Oh my gosh, Don, RV selling, right? You know, um, there's so much to an RV. <laughs> it's kind of like selling a house, you know, but here from the client standpoint, they just want to know when they die, it gets paid. Your standpoint, it's really underwriting, baby. Well, their health, so, so it is true what you said, product from the underwriting perspective, not the product features benefits perspective, 
where the, will their health fit into it? And that's the key, looking up the medications, their illnesses, will it fit into a product? So product is more this, and this is rightly so, you know, now we have all the tools and you can call me when you're with a client and we'll help you. Um, oh, wow, this, okay, lack of knowledge. Okay, we're rocking here. Skill is teachable with will. No stick to -tiveness. Yes, perseverance. Perseverance, that's a huge one, man. Perseverance. Oh, just hanging in there, man, because you're going to learn. How many people truly know how a cell phone works? <laughs> we just use them. That is so true. Like we, you ever take one apart, like to replace a battery? Man, um, hey, I sold RVs. Todd, you sold RVs too? Oh my gosh. Selling intangible items is so much better. Um, who do you want to protect from taking on your debt? Great question. That's a great closing question or a pain finding question. Who do you want to protect from taking on your debt? 85% um, from the phone, 15% in the home presentation, and 5% skill and no product knowledge. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's good, man. 85%, you're talking about kind of the, the spread of um, skill or expertise on the phones, baby. Yeah, start with the phone. Uh, yeah, 10% product, product knowledge, 10 and present phone skill. Yeah, you guys are like, you're getting it. Um, it's really mindset attitude and understanding where really the, the sale starts at the phone call. You got to book appointments, right? You got to learn to book appointments. Okay, so you got to get over, overcome the fear and learn how to book. Once you learn how to book, you're in the house, then um, the in-home the in-home presentation to close, right? And then, so you get the client, um, you know, this is pain finding, and then you come up with a solution, and the solution is underwriting. I mean, you, I call, you, know, you can call it product, but it's really underwriting. What product can they fit into, okay? And then locking the sale down And then, um, uh, so this is the placement and persistency part. And then um, ERS, getting the referrals in the middle of the application, right? So this is like number one, number two, okay? I mean, you gotta, um, when you think about what you need to put your time into, sold homes, RVs, jeweler, filter, cleans, air purifiers, mortgages, wow, really? <laughs> and you were law enforcement too. <laughs> All right. Here's the other th zero production. Okay, so here, how about this? This is all good stuff, man. You guys are like rocking it. Um. Here's one thing that was significant to me um, about all that. Um, uh, no leads to dial. <laughs> no leads to dial. So when you have no leads to dial, you're not going to dial the phone and you're not going to book appointments, right? So, you know, it's kind of easy to, to say every one of them are averaging $1,000 a week in leads, right? So what do you do? Like Brittany actually, um, was it Brittany? Someone, I forgot on what we were talking about is no leads to dial. Well, yeah, you have leads. You do. Alex, well, what do you mean? I don't have leads. I don't have leads. You do. It's called your warm market. So let's just kind of lay it all on the table. Okay, you've got your warm market. These are people that you know that you could help them with life insurance. But Alex, I didn't come into some of warm market. You tell me you don't have leads. I'm telling you, you have leads. 
okay? I'm giving you solutions and I'm telling you, you have leads. Now, whether you take me up on it or not is up to you. I'm just talking about brainstorming solutions for you. More market, people that you know, that you can make some sales, right? Then you can reinvest in leads, right? And then you reinvest in leads turns into sales that you can reinvest in leads. Okay, and then the sales turns into ERS referrals. This is like the cycle and leads, right? This turns into sales, which turns into ERS, more ERS referrals, and maybe a, a reduced lead investment, right? So you can jump into this cycle whenever, wherever you want. You can start with your warm market and then get the money and reinvest it. Or you can start off with 50 bucks worth of leads and any sale you make, you take all that money and put it back into your lead investment. You know, so one week you're putting in 50 bucks and then let's say you make um, you know, $400 from that $50, then you put $400, like I'm not joking, you know, and then from $400, you know, let's say you make $2,500, $3,500, right? Let's not, let's make it more conservative. Make $1,600 from the $400 worth of leads. Okay. Put all that money into leads. Right, this is what Megan Wood's doing. You know, this turns into <laughs> really turn it can turn into 10 grand. Like seriously, that's what some of these people are doing. Let's just say this is let's just be conservative and you made five thousand dollars from sixteen hundred. Like I, I'm I'm going a little bit nuts here. So 5,000 times five weeks, see what I'm doing? So you made 5,000, now you've got five weeks of $1,000 invested in leads. Do you see how this works? This is five weeks, three, four, five. What are these guys turning in? Seven, 10,000, 20,000. 5K to 7K, let's just, that's what you're making. Would this change your world? Because you leverage $50, right? You cashed out big here, why don't we spread that $1,000 over the next five weeks? And now you turn that into money. Do you see how simple it is to go from where you are to go doing what, um, and by the way, you're getting your skill level up because you are pounding the phone, 300, $400 a week. You're booking, you know, 20 to 40 appointments a week and you're slamming it, right? D does this make sense? This is where I think the real key from zero production every week. Do you think that if you had $1,000 worth of leads that you'd blank on $1,000 worth of leads? You're, you're going to turn something in, okay? You're going to turn something in. What time is it? So anyway, <laughs> so I, I'm open for questions. Anyone have any questions? Have I given you, given you like maybe food for thought on um, things that you could do to maybe turn into that model agent, right?
the model agent that um, invests in leads, does the work, go runs appointments in a very disciplined manner with a schedule and turns in, you know, five, 10,000 a week in production leading the way. And I've got some people in the stall that I think are going to be those people. I'm really excited about Brittany. Brittany is going to tear it up. Um, Brian Lewis, I've got expectations on him. D. McEnany. Um, I've got, I'm excited about her. Um, Don, his, I'm waiting for his leads to come in. We had, uh, we, we switched to the new vendor that um, Mike Maurice is using, and those are local um, by area code, phone, you know, phone number area code um, in his area. And he's willing to see people face to face as well as telesale, you know. And so I'm kind of excited when those leads start coming in, which I think they are. There, I think there's a first batch came in like last night. So I'm, I'm going to get those out to you ASAP. I, I do have some people that are investing, right? And um, and I've kicked some stuff in, and I've got I got a crazy plan. I've got this real crazy plan that maybe I can help the people that are willing to do the work. Um, and I might just kind of work on an individual basis, uh, but it's really insane and um, involves a lot of money uh, that you can make. Um, so we'll see, we'll see about that. Anyone got any questions, anything on your mind, anything sales related? I think we, we talked a lot about, you know, um, solutions you know y'all have things that are holding you back because if you didn't then you'd be um consistently turning in business so we got to figure out okay what is preventing you from doing that and then let's solve it right let's solve it i have all kinds of solutions that are ready to solve your problem let's talk about what your problem is and then let's solve that problem okay um anybody anybody Going once, going twice. <laughs> I, I just hope I, I go ahead. I just have a, a I guess a, an observation or something personal, and and I, I know I'm not the only one, but I I think a lot of us are, are trying to build a a seriously pro, you know profitable profitable type business, but we're not using the best tools as far as we're re trying to get trying to get by on bonus leads to make full-time income and it just it's just not gonna and, and when you do that you get frustrated because it, they're older and it that puts it in your mind that this business doesn't work or these leads don't work in general and it's just not that's just not fair it's not you're cutting yourself short and i know i'm guilty and then i'm sure i'm not alone but i think and uh we're trying to i know there's a, a slick saying i'm trying to you know <laughs> but i think you you kind of get my point but you gotta you gotta like you say you gotta invest what the the newer type leads as well and quit relying on the freebies, you know, trying to cheapen the business. And, and when you do that, cause I, I was here, I was there when, when uh, Chris Manifold, I, I was watching him back a year ago when he was just getting started and, and they were working on the Facebook leads and stuff and they weren't, you know, he did, he wasn't getting, where he is based just on the bonus leads so you do there is definitely the investment is definitely you know that's just that's kind of my one observation and, and I'm hopefully helpful yeah that's a that's a very good point um it's kind of like you're you're trying to fight the battle with a pen knife and you need a you need a broadsword you're trying to fight the battle against poverty with a pen knife. <laughs> you need a, a dead gum broadsword to, to slay the dragon. And you're not giving yourself the opportunity to use the best weapon 
available to win the battle. And when you look at what these people are doing, it's pretty obvious to me. Um, the first observation, um, and I'm just telling you straight up, that they're going back into the homes. They're going back and meeting people face to face. That's what they're doing. Megan Wood is door knocking. She's, she'll leave door knock fresh leads before she'll even call them. She'll only call them if she can't get a hold of them or can't see them face to face, right? And people are home. Well, I don't want to do that. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just telling you what these people are doing, right? I'm just telling you what they're doing. You decide what you want to do. But I'm just telling you they're going into homes. You're not comfortable with it, then get pretty darn good at doing it over the phone. But you're going to need leads to do it. And you need a whole bunch more leads to do it over the phone. You just have to. You need more leads to make sales over the phone than you do in the home. It's just how it is, right? And you got to invest in what these people are doing. I, I got to stay away from you got to what these agents are doing is they're investing in all the different types of leads they're getting ers referrals they're selling someone referrals and taking care of current clients you know they've been in the business long enough where they have current clients you don't yet if you're new okay so that's okay um but one thing that is for sure is that they're ordering direct mail leads, um, mail pro leads, the internet leads. Um, in the case of Mike Morisi, TLP leads, local TLP leads where you can go into the home. And they're just investing in all the different types of leads. And again, that's what they're doing. They're going back into the homes. Now, you want to do telesales? You still can do it. You just have to be committed to getting a lot of leads. Okay, and probably the cheaper leads. Like, I think your return on investment on direct mail, you'll get a return on investment doing telesales. But because I'm, you know, I'm heavily invested in those, I don't know if I want to let you. If you're going to do telesales, I don't know if I want to let you have direct mail leads. You know, you can have all the other ones, right? Because I think that'll be better use of your money. I, I just do not want you throwing away a money on a $65 direct mail mortgage lead. Because those are primo leads. Those are like pre. Those are like the primo leads that most agents want to get, but many can't because we don't have enough of them, right? And so, if you have access to those, and you can meet people in the homes, that is really the primo lead. Honestly, you know the direct mail phone expense are pretty good. You know they're not. There's you know challenges to those too. But anyway, I guess my point is that. The reality of the situation is, is that. So, you know, how you deal with that is how you deal with it. I mean, I got my vaccine, my first one. <laughs> I'm getting my second one beginning of April. Uh, I don't care what you tell me. The vaccine apparently works. You can like dispute it, you know. Don't get the vaccine then. D don't get it. And stay in your home and dial. Just dial, okay? Get leads and dial. Tell us, sell the crap out of the leads, right? So whatever, I don't care. <laughs> Let's try to help you. So what you said, Bruce, was right on. Scott Mills going back into the homes. That's part of the thing I'm thinking about doing. What's the better of the leads to do telesales? I don't know if there's a better lead to do telesales. The cheaper leads are the better ones to do telesales because your numbers are going to be as not as good. Like there's some, like you heard, what's it, James Alara? He gets like a 25% closing rate, like a 25% show rate and 25% closing rate. Is that what he said on telesales? I mean, you guys heard him like I heard him. I swear, he said 25% show rate. This was Pam, actually. 25% show rate and 25% close rate. So think about that. The in-home, you have about a, like James is getting 80% show rate and 80% close rate. So 80%, 80% versus 25 and 25. You tell me, 
right? You tell me what, now that's just him. He, he's, he's not that good over the phone maybe, right? Maybe you are really good over the phone and you'll blow those numbers away. I want you to be good at telesales. Trust me, it's not like I'm, I'm not, but it just takes so much more skill. It takes longer to develop that skill to sell over the phone. Selling in the home is way easier skill than selling over the phone. It, it really is. I don't think anyone disputes that at all, okay? Um, but you're gonna have to invest in leads to go, to go call. You, got, you need something to call, man. You know, it's kind of like you're asking for heat from a fireplace before you put wood in. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyway, all I know is what the top people are doing. And if you want to do what the top people are doing, then do that. But we do have some people that are really good at telesales, like really, really good. But they were awesome at in-home sales too. So the telesale thing, I would, I'd stay away from direct mail leads and I would do all the internet leads, you know, the $11 internet leads like Jeremy Patton has worked. Um, I would stick with those. I would do the, you know, telemarketed leads. You gotta really pound the phone with those. Um, that's, what I, I, that's what I would do for telesales. Yeah, I put wood in the fireplace. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's like per, put all this in perspective. You're talking about an eight dollar or you know an eight dollar nine dollar telesale lead, right? So you tell me, like, you, you got to have some kind of expectation on what you're investing in. If you're doing telesales, you got to go through a bunch of crap to get to the ones that are going to buy, right? That's why, especially your telesales, you've got to get referrals. I don't know how you can make a telesale and not get referrals. And the, to me, that's insane because it's so, you know, if you get to 10% close on, on those TLPs, you're going to make your money back. Even if you, what, ordered 30 of them, you make one or two sales, you're going to get your money back. But you make your money on the referrals that you're going to get from those sales, right? I mean, it's not a magic lead. There's no magic to any of this. You know, if you're, if you're doing investing in the $65 direct mail mortgage leads, right? And you bitch because you, you run into the same thing. You're going to call people that don't pick up the phone. You're going to find people on $65 leads that don't remember sending it in, right? But you're going to find five or six that you can go to their homes, three or four show up and you close half of them. And then your return is pretty big. But again, I wouldn't, I would let no one tell a sale. I will never let you order a direct mail mortgage lead if you're going to tell a sale them. Never. I would, I would be cold and dead before I'd let anyone on my team order a direct mail mortgage lead. Never if you're going to tell a sale. Never. Your return, you're going to contact more people, you're going to book more appointments, right? But I can't trust the close rate. So I'll never let anyone tell a sale of direct mail mortgage. So, you know, never, unless you find your own source, but you're not going to go, go through the alliance. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, um, that's my opinion. <laughs> We're 1201. Okay, well, I hope this helped, right? I hope, I want you guys to think about what is it that's holding you back from turning in business every week? And then let's fix that problem. Typically, it's not investing in leads, right? And then the other problem is, you're going to say is, I don't have enough money to invest in leads. If you got $50, you got $100. You know, let's go, go sell something to a friend or relative, right? Like, don't be too proud, proud man. Like, let your ego put your ego aside and let's go make some money. Like seriously, I'm not kidding about the warm market. I'm not kidding about that. If that's gonna help you um, develop the seed for your harvest, then get the seed. But then when you make a sale, 
Don't eat your seed. Invest that seed back into your business. It's a simple formula. You know, I just need people to, you know, figure that out and let's work together on, on that. And I'll kick in free leads. Like this crazy thing I'm thinking about. I'm not going to announce it. Um, it's pretty insane, though. Um, it's really insane. Anyway, rock on, man. I appreciate you guys. Take care.